Hey, it's Ryan with Parts Doctor, and today I'm going to show you to replace the bearing kit on this Fisher & Paykel top load dryer. Need a few different tools for the job? We'll leave those listed in the description below. Let's get started. When the bearing fails, the dryer can make a squeaking or squealing noise while the dryer is running. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power to the dryer. Additionally, you'll be working around sharp metal edges, so proceed with caution. The first thing that we'll do is we'll open up the lid of the dryer and we'll lift it straight up to remove it and we'll set it aside. With the lid removed, we'll now remove the two screw covers and the two screws. Ours is missing the screw cover on the other side. Now with the two screws removed, we can lift up the top cover and disconnect this electrical plug and remove the wire from the retainer. With the wire disconnected, we can now depress the locking tabs and push these through the cabinet of the dryer. You can now lift off the top cover and set it aside. Next, we'll remove the front panel of the dryer. To do this, start by removing the two Phillips screws on the front. With the screws removed, you can now pull out and forward to release the front panel. Tilt the front panel towards you, then rotate it out to access the ground wire and pull it off to remove it. We can now set the front panel aside. The motor control module is located in the bottom left corner. We'll want to start by removing the top cover. To do that, depress this locking tab, lift up, and then pull it forward to remove. Now follow this wire and disconnect the electrical plug. Then disconnect the brown one next to it, followed by the two ground wires at the bottom. With everything free, we can now rotate the drum and chassis assembly outside of the cabin of the dryer. Grab the sides while pulling towards you. Continue to lower the drum and chassis assembly down while making sure that it's not getting caught on anything on the inside of the cabinet. With the drum and chassis assembly now sitting on the floor, we'll now need to lift up on it and pull it out of the cabinet. With the two pieces separated, we'll now set the cabinet aside so we can work on the drum and chassis assembly. With the drum and chassis assembly removed from the dryer, the first thing that we'll do is remove the idler pulley. To remove the idler pulley, insert a flat blade screwdriver into this slot. We need to remove some of the tension off of it so we can lift it up. And over this bracket, then we'll do the same thing with the bottom side. We push up and lift it out of the bracket. And remove the idler pulley from the dryer. With the idler pulley removed, we now need to set the drum and chassis assembly on its side. The side with the belt will need to face up. This end will need to face down. Next, we'll remove the chassis panel bracket assembly by removing this screw. Then pull this end towards you. Rotate it out to remove it. Next, we need to remove the screws that hold the chassis beams to the inlet panel. Remove the two screws for each one, followed by the bracket and set it aside. Now repeat the same thing for the other ones. Take note of which bracket goes in which location. This one here has a bracket on the front and the back side. Now 
Next, we'll disconnect the door grabber assembly from the panel by depressing the locking tab inside here. Use your finger to depress the locking tab while pulling the door grabber towards you. Continue to depress the locking tab while pulling towards you until it releases. This may require quite a bit of force. Then rotate it outwards to release the bottom locking tab from the panel. Now using a five millimeter Allen wrench, remove the bolt to the bearing. With the bearing bolt removed, we can now remove the inlet panel assembly by carefully lifting up and off to remove it. Next, remove the five screws securing the bearing retainer. Ours is missing one of the screws. Next, we'll remove the inlet bearing shaft. You'll need a 22 millimeter socket that's deep enough to clear the shaft. Here's the new bearing next to the old bearing. If you look at the new bearing, you can see the bushing in the middle has a lot more material on it compared to the original. The original one's worn out. If you have a bad bearing and you need to purchase a new one, you can check out our website, partsdoctor.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. You wanna make sure that you're searching with the model number from the tag on your dryer to make sure you get the correct part. The new bearing comes as a kit and it includes all of these pieces. Before installing the new bearing, we'll first quick clean this up with a vacuum. First, we'll install the bearing inlet shaft by inserting the short end through the opening, then aligning the bolt. You'll need to hold the bolt in place from the backside while you screw it in place. Once it's hand tight, we'll then torque it in place. Using a torque wrench, torque this to 20 newton meters or 15 foot pounds. Next, insert the bearing by first aligning the two openings on the bearing with the two rivets. Then install the five Phillips screws. Be careful not to over tighten and strip out the screw holes. Next, we'll install the inlet panel assembly by aligning the shaft on the bearing with the hole on the bushing. You want to make sure that this opening on the bottom is facing the bottom of the dryer. Now insert the bottom tab on the door grabber and slide it in place. Then insert the top and slide it until it locks in place. Next, reinstall the three mounting brackets and the screws. Next, reinstall the chassis panel bracket by inserting this end first, then rotating it until it snaps in place, then reinstall the screw on the end. Now take the cover and insert the screw, then take your washer and set it on top. Take this and start by screwing it by hand. Now, 
tighten the screw using a five millimeter Allen bit and torque it to seven foot pounds or 10 Newton meters. Before installing the idler pulleys, first make sure your belt is aligned on the drum and on the shaft on the motor. What we'll be doing is aligning this notch on the bracket on both sides. Make sure that the spring and the pin are aligned and slightly compress it. Hook the bracket on the bottom first. With the bottom of the bracket locked in place, we can now push the top while compressing the spring until it locks back in place. Now we can install the drum and chassis assembly back into the cabinet, align this circular notch with the circular pieces on the bottom, lift and set in place. Then lift up and rotate back in place. Next, reconnect the two electrical plugs. Followed by the two ground wires. Followed by the cover. Now reinstall the front panel by first installing the ground wire. Align these two notches with the two notches here. Use your foot to hold the bottom of the panel in place while bending out the top edges. Align the notches on the panel while pushing till it locks in place. Followed by the two mounting screws. Now reinstall the top cover by inserting the two tabs through the openings, pulling on them to snap them in place. Then reinstall the electrical plug, then reinsert it back into the retainer. Now lower the top cover back down and align the edges while pushing down. Then reinstall the two screws, followed by the screw covers. With everything put back together, test the dryer out to make sure that everything's working properly. So that's it for this video. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, let us know in the comments below. And if you like fixing things, please consider subscribing.